This tutorial video deals with the widgets menu. The widgets menu is available via these two icons which are placed on either side of the screen. So if you're left or you're right handed, you can access the functionality. This is quite an important aspect of the screen and it's good to get some orientation here because there's a lot of powerful features that are available. So we tap on that, it opens up as you will see the home page. What I recommend is the home page is something that you should use on a regular basis. It's very convenient. You can be in a whiteboarding session and you want to jump back to a video conference. You go into the widgets menu, the home button takes you back to the start screen. It's the simplest way to navigate the screen. We have the split screen functionality. So we'll start by having several files open. So I'll open, for this instance, I'll open the browser. We'll open up our Zoom. Teams is running already. We can open up a whiteboarding session. Once again, as you see, we go to the home button. It takes us back from the whiteboard. So now I've got several applications open and we can go into split screen mode. It asks me which windows I want to display in a quad screen split. So I'm gonna select uh, Google Chrome, Zoom, uh, Teams, and the whiteboard. You'll see now we have split the screen into four. These applications are all still live and can be edited and uh, operated. The whiteboard is fully functional, as you will see. So now we are using this as part of a presentation. I can annotate by hitting the annotate icon on the widgets menu. You'll see it opens a menu at the bottom here, which gives you an option to annotate, erase, uh, import to the whiteboard, which is very powerful. So once you've done this, you can export it and put it in the whiteboard. And you have a save function. So what you would do is you'd annotate over any of these screens. You will annotate, you will do your presentation. And what's really nifty is the people in the meeting, or the students in the class can now capture this content and take it with them. So we generate a QR code again. We can scan the QR code and transfer content from our phone or tablet directly to the screen. Annotate, we've looked at. Privacy clean, this is very powerful function on the new V6. It gives you the option to clean your browser history, your temporary files, plus system application and account logout. So privacy clean is quite a powerful function. It allows you to clean the board after your presentation or your meeting, or if you're a conference venue, after you've had guests in a venue, you want to get venue back to its default. Uh, we can store up to 180 minutes of content that we can clean up. We hit the clean up button and all of our files are erased from the board and there's no security risks leaving content behind. We have a timer function, which is very handy, especially if you have people giving presentations, you've got multiple people, you need to manage your time. We simply add the amount of time we want the timer to run for. It reduces it to this small footprint, which you can now put up in the corner of the screen. We can also make the timer full screen. If this is an educational environment and there might be exams that need to be timed, quite simply, we start the process again, it runs, and then it brings up the notification at the end that the time is up. Next up is the camera function. This gives you a view of what your camera is seeing in the room. It's also a good way to witness the quality of the cameras on the Mac Sub V6. And very simple functionality. Uh, you could take a photograph of the room. So you can have a group photo of all the people, all the delegates in, in the meeting or the conference. 
What you can also do, which is really powerful, you can take an image and you can move it onto your whiteboard. You can take an image and you can place it on the whiteboard. And here you see we can now manipulate this image and add it to our presentation. In the camera function, you also have a QR code that is generated once you take a photograph. You scan the QR code and people in the audience can take the picture home with them on their mobiles or their tablets. Also remember, you will see two dots at the bottom of this menu. This means it can be scanned across. So we scan across, there's more functionality. We have the AV controller. This is a powerful feature which helps us to manipulate the camera. Um, we spoke earlier about artificial intelligence being used in both facial tracking and the beamforming microphones for audio pickup. So you have shooting mode, it's defaulted to manual framing, but you can add AI framing and sound source framing as well, depending on your choice. Uh, if you go into the camera settings, it opens up the settings. Uh, so we have the manual framing, the automatic framing and the sound source follow-up options. We can also have a picture-in-picture -picture scenario as well. So we can have uh, the wide field of view camera picking up a pan panoramic view of the of the room and we can have pan tilt zoom zooming in on people and we can now uh, add this to a picture in picture scenario and when we if we now open up the camera functionality and now you will see we have a picture in picture we have the wide field of view picking up the room as a whole and we have the auto tracking camera picking me up uh, separately. And this is quite a nice layout option to have for your Teams or your Zoom calls. Once again, on the widgets menu, we have a voting function. This is quite a powerful feature. So you have two options with the voting feature. You can either have a very simple vote, a fast vote, where you will have uh, options that you can choose from it can either be anonymous or so we can have multiple choice as well we go create vote and it brings up a QR code we scan that QR code it opens up a browser on our phones or our tablets where we can enter in the vote it then appears here as to how many people have voted and then you can view the result I will demonstrate this briefly I go to my camera application, scan the QR code, it takes me through to a browser option and now I have all the options on display here. I can select an option, submit, you'll see one person has voted so you can easily see if everyone in the room has voted. We go view results and we can have it as either a pie chart or a histogram. There's my vote. And also what's very, very handy is we can scan a QR code to take the results with us. Or alternatively, we can insert this into a whiteboard. And there's our voting results. So that's very, very handy. We go back to the home page. You can capture any area of the screen that you choose and once again you can take the snapshot and you can add it to your whiteboard. And there I've added it to my whiteboard. That's my screenshot. Next up we'll look at the very powerful screen recording function. This is great if you have people who couldn't make it to the meeting or the training session or if you just want to record minutes. It's a very simple application to use. It's got a start button and a microphone on off. So typically you'd want the microphone on. So we start the recording. It minimizes to that a small record icon which you can put at the top of the screen so it doesn't interfere with your presentation. You can now do your recording or your annotation, Teams call, Zoom call, whiteboarding, all that functionality that now can now be captured 
you can stop it by hitting the stop button. It then generates a QR code so that people uh, in the presentation or the training can take the contents home with them on their mobiles or their tablets or alternatively you can save it and on to either a local disk or in this case my memory stick and we now have this content available so after the recording it minimizes to that I a small group and that's great for archiving purposes and the final item in the widgets menu is the process function. This basically brings up all the applications that you currently have open, so you can access those applications or you can close them as well. Also in this menu here, you've got a brightness function where you can make the screen brighter or darker depending on your lighting conditions. You can control your volume from here as well. You can invoke a keyboard. If your application doesn't invoke a keyboard automatically, you can force it by that function. Uh, and then you have the settings menu. This may or may not be locked out. It can be locked out for security purposes as it's not really required by the user. At the bottom, you have a task window where you can view all the applications that you have open. You can jump to any of these applications. It's just easy access. And that's the widgets menu.